Is this a combat robot? Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and today we're going to be building something just a little bit on the silly side. I have this here, which is 50 millimeter uh, aluminium tube, which is actually quite thin on the inside and it's almost a meter of it. This is actually left over from building the balloon popping robots. One of the ones I did not build on camera. Uh, and the reason I'm holding this in my hands is that ARC's beetle weight meet is this weekend. Uh, and Annie, are you okay? Uh, is not working. She is, uh, yeah, just kind of in between stages right now. There's still more CAD to do. There's a lot of machining to do, new parts to make. Uh, and some of the parts are untested. One of those big ones are these, which are 500 kV brushless motors and big ones at that. These here I'm hoping I can use as YOLO drive by just slapping a wheel on the outside of them, not needing a gearbox at all. But I don't just want to throw these on Annie and run them that way, I do want to give them a test first. So that's what we're doing today. We're building something ridiculous to test out some YOLO drive with. Uh, and this should be a quick, simple build because we're just gonna be slapping wheels on either end of this pipe uh, and going from there. Although I think I will actually cut it down a little bit because this tube is not very thin. So I wanna add some extra armor to the front panel. Uh, but having said all of that, let's cut and drill. Okay, so all of the holes are drilled now in the main chassis and I've cut the main chassis down to uh, 62 centimeters or 620 millimeters, which is basically just over uh, two feet, uh, which is I think probably one of the longest beetles, at least one of the longest beetles I know of. Uh, it's still not perfect. There needs to be a couple of holes along the front here for armor um, or added armor because this stuff is really thin, but that we will do at a later date because while we were doing that, the printer was running and we have new pieces. We have one tray and one wheel and we also actually have the tire that goes on that. Um, so these trays are designed to hold absolutely everything that we need and then get slotted into the end of the tube like this. I'm not gonna go all the way in right now because I won't be able to get it back out again because it is quite a tight fit down in there. Um, and then yeah, this hub here is then gonna get jammed inside this tire which is actually quite a process because this tire is, or this hub is designed to fit just this wheel and really only just this wheel. Um, so if we can get it on at all, that would be good. Yeah, here we go. It's just one of those things that it takes a little while and takes some levering essentially to get this thing on. But then once it is on, you end up with a very nice TPU tire. There is absolutely no air in this. The original version of this, which is an RC car wheel, the hub is designed to have a little bit of air inside the actual tire section but we don't really want that in combat robots because anything like that can be uh, punctured or hit or it just adds a point of weakness. So in this one, the TPU goes all the way to the outside. I've printed this rather strong, so there's very little give in it, uh, but if it gets hit by a spinner, it is going to give quite a lot and it's going to save the motor that it's attached to, which speaking of, we have one of those here. Uh, this guy is pretty much ready to go. So. I have two of these wheels and these two motors are threaded opposite. So this one is a normal thread and the other motor I have is a conventional uh, and a left-handed thread. So I've actually 3D printed the thread 
into the bottom of this so that both of the motors are, or sorry, both of the wheels are the same because I could not get my hands on eight millimeter reverse thread nylock nuts, which is what I'd want on the outside of this. So instead, we're going to do a trick showed to me by one of the other members of the group that I fight in, which is to add hot glue to the ends of these after we've got this all together. But that is proving to be a little bit difficult right now, so I might have to, uh, yeah, have a bit of a go at that off camera because that's actually a little bit tighter than the left-hand one. Anyway, let's add some stuff to this. For now, uh, let's get going with this. So the first trick is to get the motor in place which is relatively simple to do. There's actually a drilled hole in this TPU piece because I forgot to add a wiring clearance hole, which is always an important thing to have when you're going to add a, uh, a brushless motor to any project. Okay, so now our two drive pods are completely done. These are two independent, separate uh, radio bays uh, that are gonna get jammed into the end of our tube. Also, the tube now has the holes required to mount up the 10 mil thick HDPE plates. And I've weighed everything just to be sure, and we are thankfully underweight by about 100 grams, actually. So we're good to go on this one. Now, before we do the final assembly and the test drive, there is one thing that this needs. It needs a good look. It needs some paint or some form of coloring because at the moment, this is looking pretty rubbish. So <laughs> I've decided that I'm going to try something a little bit different this time around. This is gonna be a very experimental robot. And today we're going to be trying book contact, specifically this dinosaur book contact. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen this already. I uh, put out a thing asking people what contact they thought I should run on this uh, new robot. Uh, so if you're not following me on Instagram, do follow me on Instagram. There is a link in the description down below. But we're going to wrap this guy in dinosaur contact uh, and it's going to be an extinction based robot now. Uh, so let's, uh, let's give this a whirl. I'm not sure how well this is going to work. I've never tried to contact aluminium before. Only one way to find out.
And there you have it, <laughs> my super wide beetle. This thing ended up being uh, 72 centimeters, so 720 millimeters, uh, which is about 28 inches, I think, wheel to wheel, uh, which is pretty substantial. Uh, from the drive test that you just saw, you can see that it kind of jitters quite a lot. I think that's because the surface was quite rough and I wasn't getting slip on my little um, uh, anti-roll bars at the side here. These might need to be shortened down, but that will basically be, I am going to get to the arena early uh, and I'm going to test it in the arena and I'm going to shorten down these anti-roll bars until the thing just works. Uh, I don't think I'm going to have a lot of pushing power because of the YOLO drive. Uh, but that is kind of the point of this thing. It's to test out the pushing power on this. Obviously, we also don't have our front armor panels on at the moment or extra bolts in here, but those things will happen before the competition. I really need to get this video edited and out to you guys. Uh, so this is where I'm going to leave this one. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed that one and I will see you in the next video.